And that's when they came up with Brian and, and uh, Steve for the Hollywood Blonde. So it still worked out for us because we had an incredible team to work with off of it. But that the original inception of the Hollywood Blondes was to be me and Brian Pillman. Oh, okay. That would have been quite something, actually. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people remember that feud in uh, WCW from that time. I certainly do as a fan of WCW. Um, what are some of the highlights of that feud for you? Oh, my God. It was, it was fun. It was just fun. Um, you know, I, I see kids today, you know, in the back and saying, okay, we'll do this and then we do this and then we do this. And they go over and over and over and over and over and over and over it. We never spoke. You know, if, if we spoke before and it was me, the only person that would speak would be Ricky. He would say, okay, why don't we do something tonight where we work the leg spot? And then like just a, just a general outline of go home. And the rest was done on the ring. And Brian and Steve's timing was so impeccable. You know, that I used to do the spot where he would beat me up and shoot me, the Irish would me to the other turnbuckle. And I would do a blind turnaround uh, cross body. Well, when you do that, you can't stop and you can, but then it, it loses some of the impact of the move. Every time you do it, no matter who you're doing it with, there's always like you're not, your stomach you knots up a little bit. Like, I hope they're there, you know, because you're going blind. Austin, every night I would do that with Austin, he wasn't just in the perfect spot. He was in the perfect spot. He would hit it perfectly, come up off of it perfectly, sell it perfectly. And it just, you just got to a real comfort zone with Brian and Steve because you knew that they were so fluid on their end. The only thing that made tough working with them was that they would get a little bit wrapped up too much into it uh like the one night in detroit they had beaten me and you know ricky and i had gone over on them and they beat us down afterwards and the, the out on the match was or, or on that segment was to be to take our titles and lay them on our chest like okay you may be the champion but we just whooped your ass and leave instead they both get wound up and uh steve was with uh, uh steamboat and brian was with me taking they threw the belt the belt busted me and busted my lip open and chipped ricky's tooth and i remember watching brian and steve look, walk down the the stairs and walking back and we're, we should still be laying out and selling ricky looks at me and he rolls over and he goes let's go partner and he jumped right up and he shot down those stairs like 15 feet behind brian and steve and it was the only time i'd ever seen ricky lose his cool he's gonna look at my partner's look look at my fucking tooth and he, you know it was uncalled but that was because brian and steve were inhabiting their characters they were really living that character which bled through on on camera uh, uh, no surprise that Steve went on to what the greatness that he became in the business, the, you know, what he ascended to. And I have no doubt that Brian Pimmel would have done similar had he not passed away at, so, at such a young age.